This tutorial is about the different types of fertilizers that can be used in agriculture. We're going to compare inorganic and organic fertilizers and think about the advantages and the disadvantages of both. So inorganic fertilizers are simply soluble inorganic ions like nitrates or ammonium ions that are applied to the soil and can be taken up directly by the plant. Organic fertilisers consist of um, insoluble organic molecules, um, often in the form of manure or compost. So these are um, decomposing um, material um, that contain large organic molecules. Um, I've just given one example here, uh, a protein, for instance, that will be broken down by saprobiotic microorganisms in the soil. So remember, we talked about these in the nitrogen cycle tutorial. What they do is they secrete an enzyme and then these break down the larger organic molecules into smaller building blocks, which the saprobiotic microorganisms can then use. And in the process of that, a byproduct, ammonium ions, is given off. And then other microorganisms can take those ammonium ions and oxidize them to nitrates and then further oxidize them into nitrates and then the nitrates can be taken up by the plant. So the plant is getting the same nutrients, if you like, the same ions in an, in, in an organic fertilizer as it would be getting in an inorganic fertilizer. But the way it gets it is slightly different. So let's think about some advantages of using organic fertilizers, first of all. OK, so clearly looking at the picture, there's one clear advantage, and that is that the ions are immediately available to the crop plant. Um, it's possible to get ex to know the exact ratio of ions that can be that can be applied. So if you know exactly what ratio of ions your crop plant needs, you can be certain that, that you're putting exactly that ratio of ions onto the soil when you're applying the inorganic fertiliser. And you can also adjust the iron content to suit your crop. Um, OK, so that's some clear advantages. Um, let's think about some disadvantages. OK. Um, because the ions are being applied and they're readily available, um, it might be possible to lay on, apply too many. OK, so let's just think about why that might be a disadvantage. Let's use um, add a few more inorganic ions to this picture. So the more inorganic ions you add to the soil, remember that they are soluble. And in your head, you should be thinking, soluble. That reminds me of something to do with water potential. So the more ions that are soluble that you're applying to the soil, the lower the water potential. And of course, if you're thinking about water potential, you should also be thinking about osmosis. So if the water potential in the soil is now so low because there are an excess of these soluble inorganic ions, then the water will be drawn from the cells of the plant by osmosis. OK, now, of course, the plant needs water for photosynthesis. So if the water is being drawn out of the plant, that is a disadvantage to the plant. OK, let's move on to the next disadvantage. Excess ions could leach because they are soluble. Leaching is um, um, a, a word that describes the inorganic ions dissolving and running off um, with the water into neighbouring waterways. So if they're leaching away, the fertiliser must be, have to be applied, reapplied regularly. And this leads to the next disadvantage, which you might have heard of from GCSE. The leaching of ions may lead to a process called eutrophication, which I'm going to describe over the page. So we'll come back to these disadvantages 
shortly. Let's have a look at the process of eutrophication. Remember, this is a disadvantage of using inorganic fertilisers. So in an exam, you might be asked, how might an increased use of inorganic fertilisers lead to eutrophication? Or you might be asked this kind of question in slightly different wording. So here are the inorganic ions, nitrates, for instance, um, and they are leaching, they are running off into the waterway. And what this does then is it provides more food, if you like, the nitrates being the nutrients, for algae to increase their rate of growth. And as they increase their rate of growth, they sit on the surface of the water like this. OK, so this green squiggle here is meant to be algae. OK, now what happens then is now that if you've got more algae, I'll just make that a little bit greener. If you've got more algae, less light is going to be able to penetrate through that layer of algae to be able to get to the other plants that are growing in this body of water. So what we've got so far is um, leaching of nitrates, leads to an increased growth of algae. Sometimes that's called an algal bloom. And now we've got competition for light, competition between the algae and the plants. Now clearly in this scenario, I think possibly the algae might uh, outcompete the plants. Now remember, the light is needed for photosynthesis. Competition for light for photosynthesis. And if these plants at the bottom of this body of water can no longer photosynthesize, they will die. Okay, so I'm going to put a cross through those because they have died because they haven't been able to get enough light for photosynthesis. As they die, the um, saprobiotic microorganisms that are in the body of water will increase their rate of activity and break down the organic molecules that are inside the cells of these dead plants. And as they do it, they are respiring. So the next things you need to say is um, if the plants die because they can no longer get light for photosynthesis because of the algal bloom, there will be an increased activity of these saprobiotic microorganisms. Sometimes these are called decomposers. And the respiration, it's important to get this bit, the respiration of decomposing microorganisms uses the oxygen that's available in the body of water. So if the oxygen is being used, then, and we'll just add the final bullet point to answer this question up here, this question, um, the fish, remember there are some also some fish and other animals living in this body of water, the fish will die due to lack of oxygen. So they can no longer respire and so they die. So they die as well. Um, so what happens is you've got a lot of dead organisms, you've got a lot of decomposition, you've got a lot of oxygen that's being used up and eventually this body of water will become um, oxygen deficient and it will um, encourage the growth of anaerobic microorganisms. Okay, so this is a disadvantage of using inorganic fertilisers. Let's just go back then to the previous page and think about some more, I think there was just one more disadvantage of using inorganic fertilisers and that is that it's very energy consuming to produce these inorganic fertilisers. Okay, so let's now have a think about the organic fertiliser and let's think about again, let's think about the advantages and disadvantages. So remember, the organic fertiliser is um, the use of manure or compost, which has waste matter and therefore large organic molecules, which have to first be broken down to make the nutrients, or the ions available to the crop plant. So the advantages of this are 
that it improves the structure of the soil. And so it increases the water holding capacity, but it also prevents water logging. So it makes sure that the soil is has good drainage as well as plenty of water available to the plant. Okay, so that's one. Um, they are slow release. I mean, imagine this process with the saprobiotic organisms releasing the enzymes, breaking the organic molecules down, um, releasing the inorganic ions. This takes time. Now, you could put this down as a disadvantage for the organic fertilizer, but it's also an advantage because it's not possible to over fertilize. And what that means is, do you remember, we talked about the inorganic fertilizer and if you lay too many um, ions, apply too many ions to the, to the soil, it might lower the water potential so drastically that water is drawn out of the plant by osmosis. And that's not possible to do that here because you can't lay on so many inorganic ions. Okay, it's renewable biodegradable, sustainable, whereas the inorganic fertilizer used up quite a lot of energy um, to make those. And it also contains micronutrients. Um, so some of the micronutrients that might be, that the plant might need um, are things like manganese, molybdenum, zinc, iron, all of those things that are not found in um, an inorganic fertilizer pack. Okay, let's think um, about some disadvantages then. Okay, so, I mean, we just mentioned a disadvantage. One of the disadvantages is that it takes a little bit of time for the ions to be made available to the crop plant. So this process of breaking down the large organic molecules into smaller inorganic molecules um, takes time. So uh, ions wouldn't be immediately available. And we don't know what the iron ratios are. So it's a bit of a bit of guesswork, a bit hit and miss, and hope that your crop plant gets the right ratio of nutrients or ions whereas with the remember we said in the inorganic fertilizers you um you you could um absolutely be certain of the ratios of ions that you were giving your crop plant and also if you're laying manure or compost you might actually introduce some unwanted spores or seeds or even pathogens to your crop 